it's really it it turned into an obsession it was more of like a very deep concern and then i started looking into it through online research and it terrified me most of what terrified me was um the carbon cycle feedbacks that we didn't have as much control over. My name's Ben Abbott. I'm an ecosystem ecologist who studies the permafrost climate feedback. Methane is a very potent greenhouse gas. A molecule of methane is 25 times stronger than carbon dioxide. <laughs> methane is formed in millions of lakes around the Arctic where permafrost is thawing. The reason why we put things in the freezer is to keep them as they are. We don't want them to rot and change. And the soil contains the frozen remains of, of dead plants and animals, plants and animals that lived tens of thousands of years ago. And so when that ice melts and these lakes form, the soil thaws out and it becomes food for microbes that generate greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane. It's widely accepted that it's probably the largest terrestrial feedback to climate change. So of all of the Earth systems on land, we think it has the largest potential to accelerate uh, human emissions or amplify human emissions. A lot of this was just a way to cope with my terror, was just to be able to know what's going on. Citizen researcher Juliana Mashayev not only read widely in scientific literature, she brought questions directly to experts like Ben Abbott. She had read papers all the way to the end. You know, I, even we in the community sometimes barely get past the abstract, right? She had read to the end and knew details about these models. Really impressed. I thought if I could get a good grasp on what was going to happen, I could cope with it. But as long as there was this huge level of uncertainty, I wouldn't be able to handle it. We are standing at the threshold of unprecedented change since the last glacial maximum. The permafrost system has never seen, at least in uh, recent history, change of this magnitude this quickly. So if we had 1.6 degrees warming 10,000 years ago, the models suggest that in the next 80 years, we, should we could have seven to eight degrees warming in the Arctic. So that's much faster warming and we're expecting the response of permafrost also to be much larger than what it was in the past. I was deep into that stuff. I was watching YouTube videos and I started even getting into like conspiracy mind minded <laughs> like places where I thought this was like being hidden from us. Like people were trying to hide the fact that these mechanisms existed when really we're, you know, we're in store for much more catastrophe than like mainstream scientists are willing to let us know because they don't want to cause pu public panic. Well, I can't say for sure we're in the safe zone or we're not. I can say for sure that we're headed towards a really dangerous place. There's a chance that some of these really big feedbacks, ecosystem feedbacks, will take the, um, the fate of the climate out of our hands. So it was, it was these YouTube videos on uh, this methane bomb theory, right? That, that there was this uh, mechanism where these methane hydrates will escape from like subsea permafrost or from, uh, you know, um, shallow, you know, the ESAS ice shelf and create this runaway global warming uh, effect. Now I know that, that all of these um, claims are overblown. Like, it's the methane bomb claims specifically. Like, obviously there's uh, permafrost feedback, but in terms of, like, research that Carolyn Ropel did. I'm Carolyn Ruppel, and I work for the U.S. Geological Survey. I'm a marine geophysicist, and I lead the USGS Gas Hydrates Project. People who may not be too aware of the thermodynamics of gas hydrates may believe that once you start triggering warming of those and breakdown of those deposits, you can't stop it. And in fact, the thermodynamics helps you a lot on this because of the nature of the reaction. It's an endothermic heat reaction. This is a problem when we try to produce methane from hydrates. It keeps shutting itself down, right? So it's not a situation where we trigger breakdown and that that breakdown is going to suddenly, like the whole deposit is going to release its methane all of a sudden. That, that's not, that is not a scientifically sound worry. I don't think we need to be afraid of any catastrophic methane release. 
from the Arctic anytime soon, not in our, certainly not in our lifetime. Methane hydrates in tundra and on the continental shelves could be melted and in effect the um, methane released to the atmosphere. However, we can avoid that if we phase down the fossil fuel use. If we mitigate or reduce human emissions, looks like you can avoid 70 to 80 percent of, of the permafrost climate feedback. That means that the, the size of this ecosystem feedback to climate depends almost completely on what we do. So it's not something you should be losing sleep over, but it's something that you should recognize, okay, we can avoid that, but in order to do it, we're going to have to move off of fossil fuels over the next few decades. I understand that we can sometimes feel despondent and feel like nothing, it's out of our hands, there's nothing that we can do. But that is not, as somebody who works with this system, uh, over the past 10 years I've been working in permafrost, that's not the impression that I have. Uh, I think that this is a call to action, not a uh, declaration of defeat.